Welcome back to LearnPianoLive.com. My name is Jamin, and as you can tell from the countdown clock, the lesson is about to get started. In case you're new with this, there's a few things I'd like to show you to help you throughout the lesson. Hey, good news. Today, you don't have to listen to my voice for the entire lesson. We have a guest. So we're going to be focused on the questions that you submitted in advance. But if you want to drop some live questions in on us, we'll do our best to get to all of those and still be respectful of our guest's time. So you can still download the PDF and the MP3, but there's no specific assignment that goes just with this lesson because the goal is just to get some inspiration or get some advice, get some little nugget of wisdom that's going to help propel you one step farther down this journey or maybe just to be entertaining. But whatever it is, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. These lessons are always guided and shaped by your questions. And if you're live with us today, there's a couple different ways you can do that. One is in the public live chat and the other is the Ask Jamin a Question button where you can ask me a question privately and I won't share your identity in case you're afraid that your question is stupid. But it's not. If you're in the archives though, then just open up the survey at the end of that. There's a place where you can ask your question. I will say I frequently get questions from students in the archives watching a lesson from six months ago, and I have no idea what they're talking about. So please try to be as specific as possible. If you're watching this at LearnPianoLive.com, there should be a PDF and an MP3 button right next to this video. The PDF will often have additional video links inside so you can get more in-depth instruction on each of the topics. And if you're the kind of person who likes to print out the PDF so you can make the same notes on your physical version as I'm making during the lesson, now would be the time to do that. The MP3 is just a play along track so you can practice more after the lesson. If these live lessons start feeling random or meandering, it's because they are on purpose. So if you're the kind of person who wants classical training with a step-by-step -step method, then you're going to want to check out Kloppel Academy on the website. It's included in your live lesson subscription, so you can do both or either. And the upper levels are seriously hard work, but it's going to take you all the way from ground zero all the way up to being ready to enter any major music college as a piano major in classical or jazz. And thankfully, I think that's about all we need to cover before the lesson. So if you'd stick around afterwards and fill out the survey, I would love your feedback. But for now, let's have some fun and make some music. Welcome back to LearnPianoLive.com. My name is Jamin, and today you don't have to listen to me for the whole lesson because we have Duke hosts with us, and they are going to tell us about uh, apparently miniature golf and uh, music and performance and social media and whatever else we get into. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having Thank us. You. And this is Marco and Haley, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Cool. And it is Duke hosts, D E U X. Yes. D -E -U -X. Okay. Yes. yes. And the name comes from. That's Marco's story. That, that comes from me traveling from one coast to the other and just kind of living life and finding myself through music and through having um, relationships with people and, and, and finding out what life's about from when I was really young to, you know, when I say really young, I mean like my 20s to now. Right. And so uh, I recently moved back to the West Coast and uh, I found out that, that I just had so many stories to tell from from the south and from the mm -hmm. midwest it's just like we're all the same yeah. but we just eat different food we talk a little different <laughs> but we all want the same things and so um but due coast is is kind of like a, a a record of those travels yeah okay cool so do meaning two then two, two. two coasts yeah. two wherever coasts. you are it's just the same people yeah mm -hmm. yeah Pretty much so where um so w you said you moved back here you started here Start Where is here. here? Like Sacramento so, here? Uh, actually, Bay Area. Okay. So Bay Area, um, born and raised, mm -hmm. and then lived in Sacramento for uh, a while. And then, uh, I, then I moved out to the Midwest from Sacramento. Okay. And uh, it was like cold and snow and <laughs> yes, it is. all the things we <laughs> are not used to. And But they have like really great food there and great people. Yeah. And so it's like, it's, oh, this is a whole new world. And not everything lives in California. There's, you know, right. bustling cities every, everywhere else. And yeah. so it was kind of like an, an awakening and discovery. Like, wow, okay, cool. This is cool. Yeah. And then um, I lived there for 15 years. Yeah. What was the, what was the attraction? That, like, what, what landed you where you landed? So I have a professional job. I actually do actually do computers for, for a living. Do computers? Like, yeah, like 
like not do coast, but like do like as in like I'm an like right. IT guy. Oh yeah, that, I that'd fix be cool like, too. Yeah, so so I'm, I'm a geek <laughs> but what by do you day. Do? I want to know. So specifically. I'm, I'm a SQL database administrator. Wonderful. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. So it's all, all kind of high techy type yeah. of stuff. Okay. And so that's what uh, that's what I am by trade. Okay. And uh, that's allowed me to pay my bills and do music. Yeah. Um, and so, but that's allowed me to travel. Okay, so this is like running queries on massive databases. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Is it is it for a? Um, can we talk more about this? Or uh, I don't yeah, it's it's it basically it's a. Uh, I mean, it's it's for a uh, a healthcare entity. Okay. And uh, so we just ensure that we're uh, we're keeping all of our records straight. And, yeah. And all that good stuff. So wow. maybe boring to some people, but um, it's pretty cool. Um, you know, and. Uh, so that that kind of mindset, it's like you got to make sure that servers are on, yeah. up and available, and yeah. and stuff. So that's where the techie side comes because I do music technically too as well. Mm -hmm. I do recording studio as well. So yeah. it's kind of the same mindset. Yeah, and I would guess that that influences you, the way you um, run the business of you as well, just right. being more analytical and right. query minded as, as opposed to whatever. Right. Right, you know, come, comes along or whatever. Less you feel emotional, like right? Yeah, right. it's more like okay, check. You know, okay, is this done? Is this done? Is that? Yeah, done? yeah. Stuff. So, um, and I did the same job, and I got transferred to the south, same company, and um, experienced heat, like real heat, like <laughs> actual humid heat, humid heat. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. But the best barbecue in the south, I'm yeah. telling you right now. Like I, I found out what barbecue is. So when I came back here, I'm uh -huh. like. Oh yeah, it's barbecue. I'm like, no, that's not barbecue. That's, that's <laughs> grilling. It's barbecue sauce. Uh, yeah, it's barbecue <laughs> sauce. It's not like barbecue, like, right. like stuck in like a brick oven for like 24 hours. Yeah. You know? wow. So yeah, yeah, it's like um, that's like the one thing I learned about is like like we're all the same, but our foods may be different, and mm -hmm. it's just like it's like so much to enjoy. And yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, so good. But uh, that's cool. But then I came. Hungry. Yeah, I came. I came back here, and I'm like. Tacos, real tacos. I'm like, so it's just like, you know. Yeah. But um, no, I just, uh, yeah, my job has allowed me to travel. Um, That's cool. And do music. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so I, I turn off that switch and then go over to do coasts and get my emotion out in, in that. Yeah. You know, so absolutely. then I, you know, we write together and it's just kind of like that other side of the brain. Yeah. So it's a, it's a relief. Yeah, so, that's cool. Yeah, and then Haley, you you've grown up here. Or? Yeah, born and raised Sacramento, Sacramento. girl. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So then uh, you come back to not the Bay Area, kind of the Bay Area, um, and then yeah, and then yeah. you, uh, where do you guys meet up? How how did did Duke Coast exist before you came back? Here? Duke Coast existed before I met Haley. Mm -hmm. We kind of prod each other about this and laugh. Um, I would say it didn't officially start until you met me. <laughs> right. It but wasn't it, great. Until it, yeah, it was. Yeah, I had I had another singer in Ohio. I started Duke Coast in Ohio. Okay. Because I figured I was on the Cal in on the California coast, yeah. and then I'm migrating sure. over to. Yeah. And so I started I started Duke Coast with her, and we started to write, um, but then I had moved, mm -hmm. and so just the timing wasn't sure. there. So, but I knew that I wanted to continue it, and so I said, "Hey, Dion, with your blessing, can I continue this?" You know, oh, cool. and she's like, "Totally cool." Yeah, she's like, "Oh yeah, go ahead and whatever." Well, right on. So she's always been a supporter. Yeah. Um, and. Um, so then, when do you when do you meet? Oh, yeah. Where do you meet? So that's a really funny story. So. Actually, Marco has another music project called Echo the Natives. And it's just a second, I'm just going to cram this sure. right into your face a little. Hi. There we go. Okay. There we go. Perfect. There we oh, go. wait. Hang on. No, because now they can't see. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. Told you it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. So, so. Anyway, so Marco has another project called Echo the Natives, mm -hmm. and it's more of like a techno dance kind of club mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And he first approached me with that. Uh, through Facebook message, and I was like, mm, nope, I'm good, mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> and then like five months later or something like that, um, Father Josh at the Fig Tree, which is a coffee shop in Roseville, mm -hmm. um, approached me again. He was like, hey, yeah, I've got this guy coming in, his name is Marco, and he really wants to meet with you. He's looking for a singer for projects. And I right. was like, all right, you know, I'll just meet You didn't make that connection with this Disco Marco? No. Okay. <laughs> I definitely Disco didn't. Marco. <laughs> yes. Um, but I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do like one little meeting with him, see mm -hmm. how it goes. And then we did a four-track EP with Echo the Natives that, yeah. please don't look it up. 
I don't I don't know what the words are that you just said. With Echo the Natives. Echo the Natives. That's the name of a band. That's, That's the, name the name of, of, of his my, project. One of my other projects. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I have cool. multiple projects. Yeah, so like, okay. And I feel like Marco could tell about my disdain towards the kind of music we were making. So he, every like day throughout the process of recording that four-track mm -hmm. EP, he was like, yeah. I have this other project. It's called Duke Coast. It's like acoustic <laughs> Americana. And he'd like stop us in the studio midway of recording a song yeah. and play me stuff that he had. Could you tell that she was... Um, not digging what um, the current project was. Or I, I, you were just I, I got the vibe. I, it was more. Uh, she was doing it more out of obligation. Yeah. Okay. And, and so I, I totally appreciated that. Yeah. But I, I really felt because I could feel when an artist is like, ah, I don't know about this. Yeah. And I had to do coast, and she didn't know about it until I said something, and then she it piqued her interest. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I met uh, Josh, who's the owner of the Fig Tree. Oh, I gosh. actually hap happened to be walking through downtown and he was standing outside i said hey uh you looking for anybody to play the fig tree and they've been open a couple months or something like that yeah. and i was the second artist to ever play there mm -hmm. wow. and um so we've all he, he he's always known that i play there yeah. and then he knew her and then that he linked mm -hmm. us together was that um when you were asking about that did you know that that was a performing venue or did he, it was just a coffee shop it, well i i assumed it was the music lounge so oh, i figured okay, it was right. a performing venue yeah okay so um, so he, he worked his magic and, and said, Hey, you need to meet with this guy. Yeah. And cool. so, so yeah, so I approached her first about Echo the Natives and that ran its course. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then I'm like, okay, I'm like, she's a really good singer. I'm like, mm -hmm. I just can't let this go. Like, this yeah. is amazing. Like, like we can do some really good stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, would you be interested in do coasts? Yeah. And then she's like, yeah, mm -hmm. sign That's up. Cool. So, so we met with her mom in the basement of the fig tree. Yeah. And then. Yeah, we just kind of started jamming. Cool. Yeah. We started jamming, and then we both looked at, looked at each other like, "This is this is really this, good this stuff." This is Ducos. This yeah. is yeah. really good stuff. Yeah, I actually have video footage from that very night. Like my mom was filming us while we were like just is jamming. Is it anywhere? Is it somewhere on the internet? No, but I should we should post Can it. You, though. Should yeah, you send it. it. Send it to me. I'd love to. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Cool. yeah, I have it. So then we walked away, and I'm like thinking, okay. As a music producer, I'm like thinking, okay, is this gonna last? Is she really gonna take hold of this? Sure. And it just kept going and kept going. That's cool. Going and so here yeah, we are, almost here two we years are. later. Yeah. Wow, that's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. So then, where are you leading up to that? Like, um, wh who and what is Haley before <laughs> she is half of Ducos? So, um, a retail worker. I was working at Macy's for maybe a year. And I had dropped out of college to help my mom take care of my grandma, who was at the time sick with dementia. And so that was, I feel like, the most prominent part of my life at that point was just helping my For mom sure. take care of my grandma. And then um, last year she did pass away. So, um, yeah, that was kind of where I was at. And then I dealt with a lot of mental health problems. I was dealing with a lot of social anxiety and chronic panic disorder. And that was really debilitating. Yeah. Um, I spent just a lot of time with my family and trying to regain that that um, stability in myself. And so yeah. um, one summer, two months or two years ago, my mom and her friend Cindy went to the fig tree. My mom, um, she took my mom there mm -hmm. and she called me up. She's like, hey, Cindy just took me to this really, really cool coffee shop. They're having an open mic tonight. I asked because I don't play an instrument. Um, I would have just needed to play songs from my phone. Yeah. Um, she's like, I asked. They have a plug in for your phone. Why don't we just go and just sing a couple songs, see what happens? And I was like. Mm. Yeah, that had to be yeah, like. I didn't want to do worst it. Possible. Yeah. scenario well i love singing and i and i have no problem doing it for like family members or in my room yeah but the idea of getting back in front of a crowd of strangers i was like mm, yeah i don't want to do it getting back in front of a crowd of strangers so mm -hmm. so you had performed before mm, oh yeah okay oh yeah i think that i was diagnosed with panic disorder in 2010 so it had been roughly roughly around seven years yeah okay yeah and now you just perform Mm -hmm. you, just, you just should perform. Yeah, I think it's just one of those things that's that awesome. was just in me. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's cool. Yeah. I'm so grateful for it, too, because, I mean, so much of my life has been born out of the fig tree and out of, you know, just getting over that fear. Yeah. 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 Uh, for other people who are in the, the same situation, um, do you have any advice for, like, is, is there any part of that that was a gradual process for you, or do you feel like it was... Um, for me, it was, it was gradual, and then it was, like full speed ahead and mm -hmm. I think it's just a matter of of just you know 
keeping lines of communication open with people around you, talk yeah. about your struggles, let it be known, and just pushing through it, which I know sounds a lot easier than it is to do, For sure. but that's that's what I did. Like, I, I thought I would never come out of it. I would tell people, like, I hope you know, like, I'm always gonna be like this, and, yeah. and now it's not that way. So I think it's just one of those things where it's an individual journey, Yeah. but that's what worked for me. Yeah, and that was, Six or seven years? Yeah, six say? or seven years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What a story. Yeah. It's <laughs> a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. We actually have a song that we wrote about that called Mama's Lullabies. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll throw the, a link to that up on, the, on there too. I'm sure everyone would love to hear that. Yeah. yeah we're recording cool. it right now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We're, yeah. yeah there are live up. performances of it, I'm sure, somewhere out there. Though. Yeah. Mama's like Lullaby? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll go, I'll go searching for that. So um, a pretty drastic change of topic here. <laughs> um, we need to talk about um, thrift shops in miniature golf. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, let's start with miniature golf. Miniature golf. So, let's do it. Uh, okay, so this, this is a serious thing for you. Yes. So we don't mess around about no. with miniature golf. No. Okay. Um, you've got your favorite places uh, back east or back east. Mi midwest. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... There are rules. There are rules. There are rules. <laughs> What's the most frustrating or you most important thing? You can't stand behind the person because you don't know what they're going to do to throw you off. So the rule is they have to be at least five feet either, okay. either direction in front of you. Okay. That's number one. Why? Oh, she's, she's going to get a big kick out of this. Because Num you number two. with a golf club, right? That too. Mm -hmm. Number so two. So you play with a lot. You you have played with a lot of, of jokers then who, who like to. Yeah, mess around. I just mess yeah. around. I'm like, no, I'm and like, you're not the there to mess just, No, I'm not. No, it's, this is. This like is not. Let's go have a good time. Play, play, play miniature golf. Olympic level okay. miniature golf, right? All right. <laughs> you train for this. <laughs> so, so um, no, it's just it's very. It's I say it jo I say it seriously, but it's 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 funny, but it's really true. Mm -hmm. um, it just it just it's really fun to do this at that at. It's not even like a level. It just is. A, it's a serious thing. You know what I'm saying? No, and so, not and at so all. I can't relate to it's, that. It's, it's, but it's so sounds funny. Great. It's it's fun, but it's serious. I, okay. I can't even. I don't even know how to quantify okay. how to say yeah. it. Yeah. But um, and you can't make any noise. Okay. Except for the people that you can't control around you. Right. There are kids at these places. I know. Okay. <laughs> I know. It, it, you just zone it out. You know. <laughs> and if they want to pass you, that that's cool too. You know. Or if they want to, you know, take that that specific uh course then then you let them do their thing and then you yeah. go back to concentrate right the serious part. So yeah. I, I think and what he's the, saying the, is i need to go mini golfing with him now and make all kinds of noise and stand literally right behind him breathing down his there, neck. There, <laughs> <laughs> there, there are lots of things i would do with, with marco uh, miniature golf is not one of them apparently yeah miniature golf no that's serious business now uh, i have lost okay now uh -oh. don't don't get me wrong but right now currently i am the champion okay we can cut the lost part out in the archives, so no, okay, no one yeah. hears that part. So, so okay. I am human. I, I do bleed like everybody else. So, um, but yeah, it's it's very like we, we talk trash in the okay. middle of, of the courses, and uh, we we keep it clean. Yes, yeah. kids around, but um, but all your favorite courses are back east. Yeah, California right now, isn't, isn't good. I'm eyeballing yeah. the Roseville one up here <laughs> by Galleria. There's so. one that you'd really dig in Folsom. It's called Monster Mini Golf. It's all glow in the dark. It's on okay and yeah. then Haley yeah your thing is thrift shops every thrift shop mm -hmm. is out there yeah because you just find great deals on clothes I sure do okay I work in secondhand clothing that's my job what yeah I, w I work yeah I work at a, um, a consignment a, blah, a consignment shop called Crossroads Trading Company Oh. And it's buy, sell, and trade. It's secondhand. You're the perfect person for that. I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is that because, wait, so when you got into that job, were you already? I've been thrift store, thrift store shopping since I was a child. Okay. That was how my mom would go back to school shopping for me. Is that Goodwill? So then you got to work at Disneyland in the end. <laughs> yeah. My, okay. my Disneyland. Yeah, for sure. That's wonderful. And mm -hmm. you're also a, a do-it-yourself person. Like yeah. To, yeah. Like, like my mom and I would do home decor, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Love it. That's cool. Yeah. All right, so sequel programmer, consignment thrift shopper, miniature golfing, Duke hosts. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Cool. So yeah. I want to check out um, Mama's Lullaby. Yeah. Definitely that one. Yeah. What are a couple other tracks that really represent your sound, your feel? Uh, I know you guys did, just did, recently did the, um, would, did you actually do the interview yet, or that's planned for the Tiny Desk interview um, thing? I, we actually, that's um, coming gone. Yeah. Okay. Um, we, 
We did. So we signed up for the contest. We mm -hmm. did a video for that. Yeah, I saw your video for the for the um, yeah. application. And that's um, for a song called Skin and Bone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And so they announced the winner. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember the person's name. Forgive me, but um, they announced the winner. So congrats to them. And um, it's a big honor. Yeah, it's a big honor. Yeah, this is the, all of Northern California, right? No, that's nationwide. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. So it was. That's it was, ridiculous. It was a, yeah, it was a big deal. But yeah, we did get honorable mention for the. For the Northern California. That's cool. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, that that's coming. And we're just doing a lot of recording right now. Uh, so we, we sat down and fleshed out a schedule to to yeah. get these songs recorded because we we've been together for a while, but mm -hmm. we just we really need to get down to get down to it. Yeah. At the end working. of the day, we only have one song out on iTunes and Spotify. Right. So. Yeah. And I want to be respectful of your time, but I also want to get into um, a little bit of the a songwriting process. And yeah. um, so when Duke Host starts. I'm, you're mostly doing material from Midwest due coasts, or uh, how, how does what's your repertoire when you first start out working together? Well, we start out wor working with uh, actually her stories mm -hmm. because she has a bunch of poems written. Yeah, in lyric formation. In lyric I just formation. don't right. Yeah, and so she'll start singing a melody, and then I'll just automatically, automatically play a guitar part to Did it. Did you say automatically? Automatically. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. yeah. I just I kind of just it's not a it's not a technical thing like okay, I got to be in a key of E or D or whatever. I just mm -mm. play and whatever just feel it out. whatever whatever is right is yeah. what's right. right. Or it can vary too cuz with our with our song that we do have out called Kaleidoscope, he did have a a chord progression from like section, yeah. 15 years ago and I had a, a set of lyrics from like 5 years ago or something like that and somehow like puzzle pieces they just fit together. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So then, um, moving forward with Skin and Bone, that is not that's not your song. Oh you yeah, didn't no, write it I, yeah, we okay. sure did. Yeah, I'm we, lost yeah. then. I'm sorry, yeah. somewhere I'm not following. So Kaleidoscope is one that you wrote together. All the all the songs that we Everything play are one Skin that we've written together. Kaleidoscope is the only one on iTunes. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's the only one that's been released. Okay. Yeah. And listen the number to. of songs. Do you, did you guys perform anything that you didn't write together? Did Duke Coast? We do a few covers. Did, yeah. Uh, of like other bands, it, yeah, but, but nothing yeah. that he used beforehand in Ohio. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, all fresh, brand spanking new. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. So then we can dive right into you guys have lots of experience writing together. Then, yes. yeah, what what does that process look like? Um, who does lyrics? Who does chords? Who does melody? Or how does how does that? I do lyric and melody. He does the instrumental. The instrumental part, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So period. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. So. That's okay. just how cool. it is. Yeah, wow. and we'll we'll talk arrangement. Like okay. You know, should this go longer? Should this extend more? Should we drop, you know, yeah. uh, violence here, or or uh, we we open it up for debate, a healthy debate, right? Um, and then we just make make creative sense of it. Creative discussion, yeah, if creative you discussion. Will. Then we just we don't really argue a whole lot about that. I don't mm -mm. think. Yeah. No. Just, we just. We but either love when it or we hate do, it, it yeah. takes Marco maybe all the five seconds to realize that I'm right, and then it works out. <laughs> yeah, it works. Perfect. It works. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, it's just you gotta love what you do. Yeah. And, and and just I think we get the vision. Yeah. You yeah. know. So. That, um, I think the thing that I talk with students most about is chord progressions and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, if we're missing anything, it's it's definitely on the the melody and lyric writing side. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So can you tell me a little bit about how? Um, how you come up with stuff or like what what makes a good melody for you or is like is there anything tangible about your process for me I think it kind of comes on spontaneously but um, I think it's just pulling inspiration from other artists and really just kind of interpreting it in your own way and seeing what comes out like for skin and bone in particular I was in line at Starbucks outside in the drive-thru and I saw like a sticker on the back of someone's car of a dandelion and you know how they have like that kind of like cliche of like right. dandelion with the petals floating in the wind and right. the line just like popped in my head the melody just popped in my head and I like picked my phone up out of my pocket and I was like I need to record this right now and I showed it to Marco the very next day so okay and you had a melody with it okay mm -hmm. so yeah. the melodies come before the the chords for you for me yeah yeah okay Marco can just like automatically Figure it out. Right. Mm hmm Okay. So yeah. you come up with lyrics, goes with a melody, you send it over to him, 
he, he puts the chords together, and then you guys both decide about the number of times through the verses and choruses and arrangements yeah. and stuff. That's pretty yeah. much yeah. The, the Or it could be the flip, and he could bring like chord progression that he's had for years and years and years with like with Kaleidoscope, and right. I'll just either try and write something for it or take something that I've already written and try and piece it together like a puzzle into, yeah. into the chords. Yeah. Can you tell me about um, how long it takes and maybe a little bit of what the process is from the first thought of the first part of Kaleidoscope through it's published on iTunes. Like, how, how long does that take? Um, and maybe not necessarily with Kaleidoscope, but in general, what do, you, what do you find that process looks like? How long is it? And how, what's the toughest parts? Maybe a couple weeks. With what? Kaleidoscope. The, with Kaleidoscope the, in particular. Uh, yeah, kaleidoscope, kaleidoscope was written in about 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was just it just worked. Well, that's not helpful at all. That's <laughs> just magic. Right. Yeah, it's magic. Okay. It's definitely um, luck. The 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 where it gets complicated is the recording process. Mm -hmm. Right. We, we are looking to get that sound onto digital yep. format, and it want, we want to sound exactly how we want it to sound. Yep. Yeah. That's the challenge. And yeah. Being a, an indie producer, it's you know, you have all this advice on how to get your sound. And it's yep. Okay. How. How do we get that? How do we harness that? Um, I've recently started to reach out to other mixing engineers and let them do that, the heavy lifting part. Yes, and, right. and me stay the producer and the arranger with her. Yep. And we yep. produce together. Yeah. And we just leave it to the pros. Um, and other cases where I have other artists come to me and they want me to track them, and they want me to produce, I'm detached. So I can right. objectively come in and say, okay, well, this maybe not might not work for you. Right. But for us, we're just too emotionally tied to the stuff so we yeah it's, yep so it's yeah. one of those stay in your own lane type of things yeah so then um at this point what um can we define the word uh producer and talk about what other roles there are mixing mastering um other parts of that the people who are actually playing the different parts um and then what percentage of each of those do you each do you do like are all the vocals your own? Do you sometimes bring in outside vocals for like a produced piece? And what part of mixing and mastering are you involved in, or is that totally somebody else? Kaleidoscope was mixed and mastered by me. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, lyrics and melody were 100% her. Yeah. And usually, they, usually they are. So the 50% of that pie, as far as lyrics and melody, is usually Haley. The only kind yeah. of collaboration I th I can think of that we did with Kaleidoscope was um, a community friend of ours, David Andrew. He actually um, did a p I'm uh, not piano violin piece for us. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Which is very nice, and it makes the song. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So in one of our recent re recordings that we're going to be coming out with, um, I hired someone online to play violin um, off of an online app, and they just they killed it. Off of an online app? Yeah, so like, like an app called Fiverr. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And they, I just ordered up a violinist, and she was located in Russia. Yeah. And then, and then a cellist that was located in Boston. And awesome. I sent them my track, and they gave me back their tracks. I'm like, this sounds cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And yeah. so that that's just the way it can happen. If you don't have people around you, there's apps for that. Oh, we yeah. do have a song coming out, too, called Mayfly. This Kay. is a really very personal and important song to me, not because of the lyrics or what it's about, but, but actually the foundation of it, the piano, was actually written and played by my, my father. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, I guess I get my musical influence from him. Um, he's played piano, so I think, I think since he was nine years old is when he first started taking lessons. Yeah. And yeah, I came home one day and he was in his hot man cave garage thing playing on his little Yamaha keyboard. That's the thing, sure, yeah. <laughs> Is that what it's called? <laughs> yeah. Um, but he was playing on it and he was like, hey, check this out, I just wrote this. And I was like, mm, dad, I gotta show uh. that to Marco. And yeah, and we have a song coming out soon and that's been mixed and mastered, so. That's cool, yeah. and about you? And Did you do the mixing and so mastering on those? I did not, I okay. set that out. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. So um, I hate to pick apart the details, of it, but recently, especially with a lot of the interviews we've been doing, yeah. there's a lot of questions because most of the students are, are just playing piano and the thought like that there is something like you press record and then you have an album and right. then like yeah. all the steps in between, right. you know, is, is a bit of a revelation for a lot of people. Um, right. How many how many steps there are to that? So, right. mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it was a revelation for me, too. I had no idea that this much went into it. I was like, whoa, being a recording yeah. artist, being a musician is hard. Yeah, there's, there's a little hard. percentage that is the music and then, then there's everything about processing the music right. all along right. the way mm -hmm. yeah right.
So it's like maybe 5% tracking and the rest of it's processing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's compression, EQ, yeah, balancing, leveling, all that stuff. Adding it, reverb, adding effects. Right. Yeah. And tracking is the actual recording of tracking the tracks. Tracking is the actual yeah. recording of each individual track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many of those do you want to do to make it sound fuller or less? Yeah. Right. How many instruments? How many vocals? Do you want to do harmonies? Do you want to add layering? It's There's so much. Yeah. So much. And recently I, I did some research on, on layering guitars. And the advice is to get the same chords, like the like G chord, you know, all the major chords, and find the alternates. Right. And play them on a separate track and then pan them left or right. Or, and, and just that way it sounds fuller. That's really so cool. So all those little tricks, you know, you can YouTube out there. Um, I know uh, Graham Cochran from the Recording Revolution. I don't know if you're familiar with him. Uh -uh. He is a DIY. Shout out to Graham because I watch you daily. Um, he's an independent... Uh, engineer and he's for home studio artists like us yeah and he is a very informative person he just he, he he breaks it down to how we can so we can understand it that's really cool and so um yeah i like to plug him because he's he's amazing but rec the recording revolution.com yeah and so um it just makes it seem it makes you know or lets you know that that it's attainable you yeah. can cut an album from your from your bedroom yeah and yeah. sound radio ready. And there's so much of that stuff too that is like a little trick that if you if you just didn't know, if you never mm -hmm. thought of that on your own, mm -hmm. but everyone out there is doing it, stuff like what you're talking about, yeah. about having different voicings of the same thing right. that you can, you know, separate that just makes it feel 3D, but then you you didn't even know that, that was, right. you never, never thought to go with that. So Billie that's great. Eilish. Billie Eilish. Yeah. Tell me about Billie Eilish. Well, and, Phineas, her producer, her brother, it's all bedroom. It, and it's, oh, really? it's a major Grammy award-winning album. Or I don't know if it's Grammy yet. It probably is. It's amazing <laughs> stuff. Um, it's really good. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing album. And I saw a, a interview with him, and it's just stock plugins for wow. vocals. And it just sounds amazing. Yeah. But it's just because she's an amazing vocalist. She is yeah. an amazing vocalist. Yeah. And she's so young. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So my, my YouTube rule of thumb is no matter uh, what you do and how good you are at it, there's someone who's half your age who's twice as good as you. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> oh, good. yeah. You get, before, it yeah. was probably out there. You just didn't know it. You could right. feel a lot better. And now yeah. you get right. on YouTube, and it's just depressing. Like, why am right. I even doing this? Right. <laughs> but, right. yeah, that's cool. So I'll, I'll check that out. Um, we'll put a link to that in, in the show notes and stuff. Sure. One last question before uh, we get out of here about copyright. What are, what are each of your opinions about, like, uh, d how important is copywriting your music? Uh, do you go through official channels? Do you have other other ways that you copyright your stuff, or um, is that just not an issue? Uh, I have done some research on that, and and there's there's a lot of advice out there. Well, what I will say is, if you want to do music as a business, uh, copyright your stuff through copyright.gov and do it right, because yeah, technically you can record something and put it out there, and it's it's you have a um, a by default copyright, mm -hmm. but um, if someone takes a sample of your song, you have no way to enforce it. Right. So the first thing I recommend is just make sure you get, you have your paperwork signed correctly yeah. on how to how to collect your royalties and, and own your stuff. At what point in the process do you recommend people do that? Um, as soon as, well, the, the how it goes, and this is according to my research, is when you're done writing a song, you sign something called a split sheet. So you, you divvy up who's going to get what on right. the song, whoever contributed percentage-wise. And then you uh, you go to copyright.gov, and then you, you upload your song, and then you copyright it in, in your name, you know, right. and then that's it. Okay. And that way you can go and you can put your stuff on Spotify, and you can collect royalties and, yeah. and all that good yeah. stuff. You so. got to pay for all of those for students who are writing lots of songs. When when should they be worried that someone's going to steal their stuff? Is it when they perform at a coffee shop, when they record it for an album, or just you re recommend pretty much everything you write? A any anyone can steal anything at any time. Let's just be you know real. That's depressing. But but here's the thing is is that and, and it's really not worth it to go after somebody for taking your song. It's up until you make money at it, right. a substantial yeah. amount of money that you would ever do that. Yeah. Um, there's there's a lot of um, legal if you look up legal cases against artists and and, and um, record industry um, right. people where they they've gone after people for you know copyright infringement uh, you'll see that 99% of the time 
it was not clearly discussed mm -hmm. as to who's going to own the song, oh. as to um, what the splits were on the split sheet, right. um, and how many notes were in a bar that is <laughs> right. that was actually infringing upon. It, it, there's so much that goes into it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But um, and th and that's the soul sucking part of music <laughs> right. and that's yeah. the the, the, yes. the, bar, the part i don't really care for the, the more i've delved into it yeah i think that's why we try and do as much of it as we can ourselves um, right because yeah. big artists lose the rights to their music their masters every single day that happened with taylor swift just recently huh yeah she lost all the rights to her masters she doesn't have any of them her does her label yeah well her previous label yeah has all of them even yeah. though she wrote every word labels are evil <laughs> yeah, they are. Unless they want to sign me, and then I think you're great. <laughs> so. Well, that's the thing. It, it, that's it's the classic discussion of big label versus independent, and it depends right. on what your goal is. If yeah. you don't want to be famous, and if you you know you want to make a median median income and love what you do, be independent. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you want to blow up, and and have your name everywhere, and be you know fairly like well compensated. But you're going to be owned, and you're, they're going to tell you how to do right. your hair and what to wear, and there's a whole other and who to be. Mm -hmm. Right. So it just depends on what your goal is. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, I can't wait to hear Mayfly. Right. Yes. That's the one uh, with your dad. He's, he's actually like performing the piano on it, or yes. he just oh, mm -hmm. yeah. That's he cool. wrote it and he performs in it. Yeah. That's cool. I tracked yeah. That's cool. Thing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So uh, we'll check that out. We'll put links to all the other stuff on there. And if you uh, didn't get a chance to ask your questions in the chat room and uh, get in before the interview was over, then uh, send them on over to me, and I will see if we can uh, snag a couple minutes of their time later on to follow up on any of your questions. And until next time, good luck. Have fun. Mm -hmm.